Ja, så flyttes det der. Yo. Big fat buns, big fat buns, yeah. Big fat buns, big fat buns. How you doing, Crowd of Six? What's up, man? Thank you for coming here. I oh, appreciate it, man. It's always good coming to the studio, man. I walk in here and this guy gives me a big blunt every time, bro. Yeah, man. I appreciate it, man. So, Mr. Motivational Speaker, Mr. Bodybuilder, Crowd of Six. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A.K.A. Landon Crowder. Well, Landon Crowder, a.k.a. Crowder 6, but whatever way works for you, man. Whatever we'll way works there. for we'll you. Keep it there, we'll man. keep it there for um, sure, bro. Where do you want me to ash this thing, by the way, too? Uh, Just bring that one over there, man. All right, let me get it. What's new, bro? Bro. There we go. You get to get shot in my legs, man? He definitely doesn't skip leg day. Bro, because he still has, you know, he looks like he trains them. We don't, we don't skip leg day, never, man, never, man. <clears throat> day I started working out, bro, I was hitting legs like once or twice a week, hundred percent. So, are you still competing? Hundred percent, man. So my last show was, uh, my last show was in Vancouver in 2018. It was my first pro qualifier. So, it was a big show, man, biggest show I ever de- uh, ever done. So, at a pro qualifier, you got to win um, the overall. All right. Um, and that's when you get your pro card. So that's my goal right now. I'm striving to get my pro card. That's been my dream since I was like 13 years old, man. So I know there's like different classifications and stuff like that for bodybuilding. Yeah. You know? So so like there's bodybuilding, which is like the biggest dudes in the little trunks, man. So I'm in classic physique, which uh, the shorts go about like three inches. And then there's physique, which is like board shorts. So I'm in the classic physique, which is kind of in the so middle. So legs matter in that one. Oh, 100%, man. Legs are, legs are a huge part. I just, I really enjoy that. Like, I really like that look. I've always looked up to like, you know, Arnold and um, all the classic bodybuilders. So it, it's a look that I inspire to. I like that. And, I like that one too. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. I find it like, um, you know, with my body type, I find it looks, you know, it, it works out perfect for me. And I still have a lot of room to grow within that um, division as well too. You mm-hmm. know, if I ever get to the point where I did outgrow the division, you know, by all means, I'm never going to stop, you know, putting on muscle, but um, for now, body or classic physique is definitely, um, you know, my passion and what I'm chasing right now. So, how'd you get into all that, man? Man, so when I was 13 years old, I got my first gym membership. 13. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if you're from Saskatoon, which is my hometown, I got my my first gym membership was at the Lakewood Civic Center. So, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, my mom was. That's the one with the pool and stuff too. Yeah, man. yeah. So my mom was the like she was a single mother man. She had me when she was sixteen. She had me super young. So I had two other siblings as well too. And there's a thing that like if uh, if you're low income, which we were low income, you get uh, a membership to all the pools in the city, man. So we, my mom signed up for. I really want to go to the gym. So I'll actually back up a little bit. So <clears throat> okay, so when I was in elementary school. It's crazy, man. When I was in elementary school, I don't know what it was. I would see like bodybuilders and stuff, even athletes, man. I always aspired, you know, to those physiques. I was like, I want to get a six pack, you know, like I want those abs. I want the arms. So I was probably like grade four or five. I had these little, like my mom had these like five pound dumbbells and I was curling those when I was like grade five. So Mm. I remember Giovanni Ruffin, he dropped a video called like, how bad do you want it? And I would pretty much copy his workout. So I'll do like hundreds of lateral raises, side, front, man, mm. curls, dude, push-ups, mm. sit-ups every single morning. before I would literally be eating cereal, watching cartoons, man, and doing push-ups, man. And what music would you listen to when you were... Oh, back then, bro, probably like Nickelback, man. You, <laughs> you were pumping up with Nickelback. Legit, man, like rock star, man, like look at that photograph. Every time I do it makes me laugh, you know? And you got hyped to that. Bro, I was getting hyped, man, but... Little Nickelback, I'm not gonna lie, man. I don't know, you know, a lot of people hate on, on Nickelback, but like, I had a good vibe. I he was made on, it, bro. He dude, makes money. You gotta respect it. Oh, guy. the first for real. But like, I was into that type of music, like, you know, like uh, um, Headley. I really liked, man. You know, like 
simple plan and stuff. And then I, I've always, you know, been into a little bit of, um, back then I was into like a little bit of rap, like uh, a little bit of like Eminem, you know, to hype me up. A little bit of like the 50 cents to hype me up and whatnot. So from 13 but, years old, I got to cut you out. Yeah, yeah. From 13 years old until now, you're 23. Mm -hmm. You've been going straight bodybuilding or did you have well, some time? Well, dude, so when I was like four or five, like I said, that's when I really started just like doing home workouts, man. You know, everything I could, I'd watch so a video. four or five. Uh, well, grade I was four, grade four or five. Grade, so yeah. like, I don't know how old that is. Like, I really don't know. Like probably like, what's that like nine or 10 or something? I don't know. But grade four or five, that's when I started. And then from there, I really wanted to get a gym membership. So we got this membership to all the pools, man. We were the closest to Lakewood Civic Center. So I'll never forget this day. So um, to get your membership to be able to go by yourself, if you're between under 18, you got to go get a training course from a dude who pretty much like is like yeah this kid can come work out here right mm -hmm. um i think it's just like a waiver thing for them so i'll never forget this guy he was like he was like an ex uh, rough rider man so back then you know when you're little like 13 years old you'd be like even like cfl players is like damn you know like it's almost like even a little starstruck yeah, yeah you know yeah, yeah and you know even all even to this day all respect you know for like you know any professional athlete including the cfl man it's not easy to get there but um it's besides the point but i'll never forget the day that you know my mom dropped me off there well no, no, no it's a great point yeah man you i know, respect it takes a lot bro it takes a, a lot any professional athlete i respect you know i have the utmost respect not even for athlete like even like doctors man any anything that you have to dedicate yourself to um and what really pisses so much me respect, off man. man is that people you know might look at you you know i i imagine how many people would say that and be like oh it's easy man just juice yeah you know like it, when people don't see like the hard work in, in in the back scene you know you can a lot of people obviously will resort to that i've never really had that you know myself like you know maybe you get the odd people that will comment that or something like that like oh this guy takes juice or anything like that but you know that's the least of my worries at the end of the day like you can focus on that but it, i really don't get too much of that man and i think a lot of people that do you know think like that it, that's on them man you know that's like they obviously have something going on themselves either they don't have a passion or they don't have a dream or you know they're not in the right place at that moment but i'm saying so i don't even take that a personal, lot more really. than juice bro Man. like if you if you i know people that literally were fat and they and they took juice thinking that you know it's just dude you could go to the gym and you can see a lot of people in the gym that are taking steroids and they look the same for five years man you know but i feel like it's an additive it's well of course you know when you get to like the professional you know professional league you know when like it, it, comes sh to it should be something that like takes you that extra bit like if you've reached your full potential your full maximum you know like you're ripped enough as natural then it's like okay i want that boost yeah you well, think it's fine like there well i think that like in any sport man like you know when it comes to being a professional athlete there's always going to be everyone wants that extra edge especially you know say outside of bodybuilding even like you know nfl the olympics man it's when you got millions of dollars on the line and people fighting for spots uh, of course, you know, people are going to want to get that extra edge now. at the end of they the day, they right? They don't allow that shit. Now. Well, the difference is between like a professional sport like the NFL or the Olympics or it's against the rules, right? Whereas in bodybuilding, it's not against the rules, right? It's not cheating. And I think it's well known that a lot of people, you know, if you want to be a professional bodybuilder, you know, you're going to have to take performance enhancements at some point, right? Mm -hmm. um, there is cases of some people, you know, becoming professionals. I think even like Ronnie Coleman turned professional natural right so there is some cases like that but you know to, to actually Ronnie, become Ronnie mr Coleman. olympia yeah he's like the eight time mr olympia i believe yeah but you're saying that he turned natural just like that like just just yeah from he turned professional natural man from what i know man damn yeah but yo yo let me go back to the story though man so when i was 13 i got my so i went to this thing i got trained by this guy it was like an hour session so he gave me the membership I passed with flying colors, man. So that was my first gym. Dude, I'd hit that place up probably five days. I've been going to the gym five to seven days a week ever since I was 13 years old, man. I love it because, like, at first, like, uh, I always wanted to, you know, get the six-pack. I always wanted to get Jack, man. I see the actors. I see these athletes. I've seen, like, Jay Cutler, Arnold Schwarzenegger, man. And... Oh, man, Arnold was my favorite Dude, for and sure, And that's when bro. I was 13. I got the Pumping bodybuilding. iron and everything. Oh, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I got the bodybuilding book of Encyclopedia. I even have a picture, if you scroll down on my Insta, when I was, like, 13, taking a picture with it. No lie, man. <laughs> I loved it, dude. I read the whole thing. It was like the we'll, first we'll book. We'll pull that up on the screen. Legit, yeah. It was the first book I read from front to back, man. Like, it was all I was interested at the time. So, 13 to 17, that's where I worked out. And then I really wanted, no, 13 to like 15, sorry. I was in grade nine when I got my second membership, which was that Good Life. 
So I was probably like 15 when I got that. Maybe 14. I don't know, give or take. So you're going to school. No, this is what happened. When I was 13, I went to the, the, the Lakewood Civic Center. And, and my mom <laughs> said, if you go here for one year, because the gym wasn't that good, then if you go for one year consistently, I'll get you a membership at Good Life. That's what happened. So I went for a whole year, like without a doubt, because like, I just love going there. Every day? F- five times a week, for sure. Okay. Five times a week. And then the next year, my mom got me a membership at, at Good Life on, on, on 8th Street, if you know Saskatoon. And, uh, dude, from there, again, I had a couple training partners at the time, a couple buddies that were into it. Then when I was 17, I remember when I turned 17, that's when I committed myself, like, I want to be a professional bodybuilder. Like, I, I remember the day. I was like, this is what I want to do. And ever since then, that's when I really took my diet seriously. I've literally been on, on a diet since I've been 17. And by diet, I don't mean like a calorie surplus. I mean like I pretty much have been eating on a structured meal plan since I was 17 years old, man. And we're still going, man, six years later, man, still trying to, you know, chase that dream of becoming a professional bodybuilder. 23 years old, bro. 23 23 years young. 23 years young, you know, and we're still young. You know, of course, when you're younger, you want to see things happen, you know, as but, fast as but possible. Man, but it's one thing because if I heard, I've heard so many humans in my life say that you know oh yeah you know i want to do this i want to do this but they never do it and they don't even fucking progress yeah like and honestly it's because they don't pull the trigger man they don't take that action because this shit isn't easy hey man well the thing is man what did you place so on my last show i placed fifth right at the pro qualifier which you know canada wide yeah dude it was well not just canada wide i believe it's uh uh north american wide so there would be people from the states, like in my class alone. I believe there's congratulations, 80, bro. Thanks, bro. I believe there's 82 uh, competitors. But here's the thing, you know, the guys in front of me are just older, man. They, they, you know, I think the guy that won was like 40 some, right? So it's just years, and that's why you got to be patient. I think with a lot of people, and everyone kind of runs into that spot. Even when you look at a lot of successful people, they run into that spot where they kind of aren't making it yet. They thought that they would make it by here, and they're still not, and they're just at the brink where they think about quitting, man. And that's the difference is that they continue to keep going, man. You know, they continue to keep pushing forward. So, and I think everyone kind of has that, hits that kind of point at some point where you're like, man, is this going to work out? And you might question yourself a little bit, but when that happens, you got to, you got to pick yourself up and be like, no, this is what I want to do. And this is what I'm going to achieve. I'm a huge, uh, cut the bullshit, cut the excuses. Exactly, man. I I heard one guy stop working out because he said he hated the smell of gym. That guy, that's an excuse, man. Like, Bro, the gym smells great, man. I don't know what gym he's going to, man. But what an excuse, huh? He probably got some, like, cheap membership, bro. He said, you know said, what I'm I saying? I really wanted to be a big bodybuilder, man, but I just couldn't stand the smell of gyms anymore. Yeah. So. <laughs> Why isn't he doing home workouts <laughs> then, bro? Why isn't he on the home workout game? Bro, can man, you like this? Yeah, I got you, bro. Boom. Thanks, brother. Look at that accuracy you got, man. You got a solid wrist, bro. I got a really straight hand, man. Well, yeah, you're you're a barber, bro, on the side. And then, you know, what? yeah, exactly. And to be a barber, man, to be using the razors, you got to be, you know, super, super straight with it. I remember this one time when I was in school. Well, shout out my cut right now real quick, bro. Hey. You yeah, know that was fresh. you, bro. Sheesh. Fresh. <laughs> we got a barber shop in the studio, so. Oh, man. Always, bro. You got everything I got, in the studio. I got, if, you're, if you're being on my show, you got to be fresh. Tell me what you're saying when you, you were in school. Fresh. What were you going to say? I cut you off, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So with the razor thing, right? Some girls wanted to learn how to use their stray razor, but, you know, I just, they're, I, I was like, yo, do this. If they can do that without shaking, you know, I'm like, you're good. Yeah. Let's Some see. people is just like, it's kind of like bodybuilding, man. Not everyone can do it. Yeah. Like, what was Buddy saying the other day? Blair Anton, he was saying, you know, he's like, some people don't have that, you know, bicep for it. Like, I think genetics play a role in anything in life. Like Huge. And that's that's Ronnie Coleman, bro. Yeah. Like, I even believe no one, that. I think he's the best in the world. Yeah, that man. Ever, like, that ever existed so far? Yeah, like, it, it depends on what you say. Like, I'm a huge Jay Cutler fan um, just because, like... But he doesn't have more than Ronnie, does he? Yeah, but it's not it's not always how many wins, man. It's the fashion that you, as he would say, actually. It's Numbers the don't lie. It's the fashion it in, right? Like the numbers don't Jay, lie. Jay came second to Ronnie for a long time, but the things, for example, that Jay did outside of bodybuilding, man, is super inspirational for a lot of people, including myself as well, too. Um, and it's just different physiques, man. You know, um, you know, even like I, I'm 
uh, even like Arnold Schwarzenegger, man, like, like look at what he did outside the sport, man. He brought so much attention to the sport. So when you're saying like the greatest, like what if Arnold never was a bodybuilder, never did what he did, where would bodybuilding be now? You know, I don't think it'd be near as big, right? Um, so I think like a, a guy like Arnold did, you know, a lot more for, for bodybuilding, but nothing but obviously respect for Ronnie Coleman, man. He's definitely somebody I look up to as well too. But I would say people I look up to personally, man, are more like Jay Cutler, like Phil Heath, man. Um, and Phil's got eight now too, I believe as well too. So tied with mm. Ronnie, man. So it's not always the Olympias, man. I think it's, you know, the fashion. Who's your favorite bodybuilder ever existed? And we're talking bodybuilding, man. For me, it's Ronnie Coleman and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger is, in my opinion, the GOAT, man. Like, he's the guy that got me started in this thing, bro. So, like, I can't go against Arnold, man. And then after that, if we're going to go a little bit more modern, um, big, I'm a big fan of Jay Cutler, man. I'm also a big fan of Phil Heath as well, too, man. He gets a lot of hate, but um, he's been a big inspiration for me, for sure, bro. For sure, man. So when's your next show? Well, right now, you know, um, I'm just putting on a little bit more size, so I'm going to compete in 2020. How much you weigh now? Well, right now, I'm about, like, this morning, I woke up about 220. So, okay. in my category, I can be, I can weigh up to 197. Is that a lot of protein powders or a lot of meals? I, I like, I'll have, like, um, for my pre-workout meal, I'll have, like, uh, two scoops of, of whey protein with my meal, just because it's a fast digesting protein. So it's really easy on my stomach, man. So I'll eat my pre workout meal like an hour before. So I'll have a fast acting protein, like a you know whey protein, and then I'll have fast acting carbohydrates as well too. Cream, that's a pre workout. Yeah, cream of wheat, bananas, man, is usually what I'll have. Then the rest of that's just whole foods, man. Like I base my foods off of um, eggs, my proteins off of eggs, egg whites, um, a lean steak, um, and uh, chicken breast, man. And that's pretty much my proteins. Like I don't. I, I don't switch it up like crazy. I keep things pretty consistent. I think by keeping things consistent, just like anything in life, that's where you're going to see the most progress. Um, but I'm a damn good cook, though. I'll tell you that right now. Dude, I see some bodybuilders, man, and they post their shit on Instagram. And I'm like, the fuck is that? Like, you know, like you'll see like bare ass like chicken on rice. Not me, man. Like I make my meals good, bro. Like anyone can sit down and eat one of my meals and like that's good. I look, I look forward to my meals, dude. So Yeah, man. Um, I eat very, very similar. You but enjoy the cooking process or the eating process? The eating, bro. I don't. I don't really like cooking that much, man. But like, like I've been cooking for myself since I was, since I started, really. Because like, you got if you want to get your protein in, man. My mom's not gonna be cooking that. She was a single mother with three kids, man. At the time, she has more now. Um, she didn't have time, dude, to cook. She's going through school, man, working. So that was something I had to put upon myself, man. So I've been cooking since I was 13 years old. So. When you've been cooking for 10 years, man, you, you learn, you know, a few tricks. By no means am I a professional cook or anything at all. I just mean for, like, a 23-year-old young man, I'm good in the kitchen. Pizzas? Oh, man. Dude. Do you have cheat meals? 100%. Man, I, just to touch on pizza a little bit more, man, I make, fuck, I make the best pizzas, man. Seriously, if I made you a pizza, your mouth would water. Wow. Seriously, like, you'd start calling my house and be like, yo, dude, I want to order a pizza. Andrew, we're going to have to go there and uh, check this guy out, yeah, man. Yeah, See how he makes, you know. 100%. And absor actually observing. It's all about the special and, touch, man. And, and you know? Be 100% because that's a big statement, bro. So I'm a plant guy, man. You know what I mean? So I like lots of plants. Obviously, you know, we're smoking blunts right now. So I like marijuana. But um, what do you think I, about people like uh, smoking and working out? I think that um, just let me talk about my plants real quick and then I'll Go touch ahead. on that. I got like the, I just want to I just want to tell you why my pizzas are so good. I got a Damn, basil, okay, still because I got a basil still plant. on it, dude. I got a basil plant in my place, man. So like I put fresh herbs, <laughs> dude. I even got this huge. Uh, I've got like three different types of basil, man, and uh, I put fresh herbs on it. So it's a big. If you don't have a basil plant, man, you got to get one. Man. I don't know. That's that seems to be like you're really serious about pizzas, man. That's that's a big cheat meal, bro. I think I put basil on everything. Is that a good thing, bro. man? To be like. Eating well, all that much pizza and no man, I don't eat this. I don't eat it that Are much. Are you gonna man. be lean enough, man? It all depends. Like a guy like me, man, I eat a lot of food. Like it's tough for me to get like for me to like say lose my abs, man. I would have to eat a disgusting amount of food to the point that I'd be wanting to puke every like two and a half hours. It's definitely possible, man. But like I have a fast metabolism, man. Like I'm born to be a skinny kid. You know, like I'm born to be like I should be like 170. Yeah, right high now. high metabolism. Yeah, like super high metabolism. So I can eat a you lot can, of food. You eat a lot. Yeah. I'm a huge believer in clean food. Like right now, I have two cheat meals a week. So I have one cheat meal after 
my quad day and one cheat meal after my hamstring day because I do I split my quads and hamstrings. So I do two cheat meals a week right now. Then the rest is just clean food. So a cheat meal, like I eat big cheat meals. So like this is my cheat meals right now that I do twice a week. I get two Five Guys burgers usually, and then I'll get a large fry. Five Guys. Yeah, Cajun style fry. And then I'll have a tub of Ben and Jerry's. Hmm. So it's like a 4,000 calorie meal. Like, you know how many fi- fries you get at Five Guys? Yeah. Because they dump that shit in the bag and shit too. It's, yeah, it's... Hey, it fills me up, man. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Bro, you heard I it here it. first. All also, guys is the place. Man, I love that place. That, that's that's how you get the gains, man, for, for real, man. But obviously, like, you can't, like, for some people, man, you can't go eat that meal, like, twice a week. Like, that ain't going to work out for you, right? Everyone's everyone's different, man. But I, I definitely think there's a time and place for cheat meals, not only for physically for your body, but also for your mental as well, too. Um, when it comes to contest prep, that's a little different. Like I'm in my off season right now. I've gone, I've gone on contest preps in my earlier years because I didn't want to have any cheat meals at all, just because of a mental thing. I've gone 16 weeks without having one cheat meal. Straight up, huh? 16. I've gone 16 weeks, man, without touching anything, man, other than my my meals at home. Mm. I'm gonna sneeze real quick. <coughs> Bless me. Bless man. you. Man. Thank you. Thank you. But yeah, there's a, there's a time and a place, man. It's just like in the off season, man. Like as a bodybuilder, we can eat, we eat a lot of food, man. You know, and it's I, I like keeping everything pretty tight. But you'll see some guys get you know a little out of shape, man. But I'm an I, I like to stay an athlete, man. Like I still like to jog and stuff, man. Like I like to do athletic things, right? Mm. Like I like to play tennis and stuff like that. Um, so I stay pretty active, man. But yo, what else were you gonna ask me? And then I wanted to finish the pizza thing. Um, You're gonna ask me something now, and actually, it was a smoking good and working out. Smoking and working out. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. So, man, I think there's just like anything you can overdo it. So, like, you know, getting waking up and getting high every day, like by no means do I recommend that at all. You know, like in, in my younger days, I used to smoke a little bit too much, you know, weed. Um, you know, more than than I think that you know it would actually you know help you. Um, but for myself. I don't smoke it every day anymore, but I think that like, you know, just using it um, recreationally, like every, you know, say every few days, man, for me, myself, it benefits me in a way that it helps me relax. Um, I don't drink alcohol, man. So it gives me something to have a little fun with. So sometimes if I go out with the, with the boys, I'll smoke instead of drinking, you know, I'm the type of guy I might have like one glass of red wine or something like that, but I smoke instead, right? Because smoking, it's, it's no extra calories. If you're on a contest prep, um, in the off season, I can use it because it's going to help me eat more. It helps me sleep better. Sleep's going to benefit muscle growth as well too. Um, so I think there's a lot of benefits when it comes to actually building muscle. Um, sometimes I'll smoke before my workouts, um, depending on what muscle group I do, if it's not going to be like a heavy day, then I'll smoke because I finally get a really good mind muscle connection, but not like crazy high, like a couple, a uh, couple puffs, so like I can feel it, um, uh, you know, and just get that mental focus out of it. Mm. Um, but if it's like legs or something like that, I'm going to do like heavy squats or deadlifts. Then, then I don't like to smoke before. But um, yeah, I think there's a lot of benefits. Just like anything, man, you can use it to benefit you. You got to be or, in control. Or you can yeah, abuse you can't, it. Man. You can't just yeah abuse yeah. it. And- that being said, some people, I know some people that will smoke every day and they get a lot of shit done too. So, but just for myself, man, I think that you got to, you know, minimize it and, 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 and actually use it, not abuse it, you know? So bodybuilding is one thing, man, you know, all, all success to you, uh, for that, you know, hopefully you do really good. Hopefully you don't eat too many pizzas and you stay focused and you can win more, man. You know, exactly. And and get I, that pro card, bro. A hundred percent. You see, you can get it before you're 25. That's the goal, man. That's the goal for sure. And I used to put a lot of time stamps on things, man. Like, I'm going to do this by this time, this by this time. Um, when it comes to... Having deadlines, yeah. Exactly. But I, I do create deadlines. Um, so, for example, like, I'm, I'm my next pro qualifier. I want to place top three. Then after that, I, I, I want to win, man. That's my goal, right? So, I set deadlines like that. Um, but, yeah, my goal would be to, to get my pro card by 25. But at, at the end of the day, what I say um, is that... It's not really a matter of when, you know, it's, it's not, it's not a matter of when it's going to, or it's not a matter of if it's going to happen. It's a matter of when it's going to happen. You know what I mean? Um, and that's, that, that's what I like to say. And that's like the mindset that I have. Um, I want it to happen sooner and later, of course, I'm going to do everything in my power to make it happen, but I'm not going to put a set deadline. Like this is when I'm going to win it because there's so many other things around it. Um, but I do, I have the mindset that I'm going to win it 
I'm just not putting an exact time right now because my next show is top three. Then after that, then I'll look at how I, my physique, I'll look at where I'm at, and then I'll structure it from there. I might have to look at my physique and say, I, I might need two years to grow and put on muscle. Or I might look at my physique at that time and say, do you know what, six months, let's do another pro qualifier and let's win it. But right now I do one goal at a time. Right now my next pro qualifier, I'm gonna place top three. And in my mind, if I move ahead a little bit, after that, yeah, then I would like to win my pro card. So this is your sole purpose right now, is just trying to get like the best bodybuilder you can be? Man, and so like ever since I was 17, I was like, this is what I want to do. Like I really didn't try that hard in school, man. If I could do it over, like I- Because you have hustled a lot, you know? Like you, I, I know you had like, bro. you were just working with Audi. Well, that's the thing, a like, and that's the thing. So like, I always knew when I was 17 that this is what I wanted to do. But in life, man, you're gonna have times where things are gonna drag you in different directions, man. And that's the toughest thing about chasing what you wanna do in life, man, is that you're gonna Tell get them. pulled, man. It can be girls, it can <sighs> be relationships, it can be jobs, man, it can be anything. Tell them. And it's gonna pull you in different directions. So I've had different jobs, you know, throughout to support myself. Um, and I've got fortunate to have, you know, good jobs, man, that could be potentially careers for some people. So last year, man, I, I got a job at Audi, man. And dude, it was a good job. I could see people there being, you know, happy, man, with, you know, their success within the industry. Um, and I, it was a rewarding job at the same time because I wasn't selling piece of, piece of shit cars, man. I was selling high end, high quality cars, right? I like even to this day, man, I, I've sold some Audis a year ago. I also talk to those people today. I've even trained some of them as my clients today. Wow. You know what I mean? So I've actually built a lot of relationships through that industry. I worked there for one year. But the thing is, man, is that when I was working there, and I was telling him before, man, when I was working there, my vision for, for example, I can see myself on stage, man. I can see myself winning trophies. Like I can see myself winning my pro card. I can't tell you the exact day because- I know, I know, I know. You're, you're real serious about it because I remember one time, you know, in the barber shop, you were saying that. He just came to me and he's like, yo, I quit Audi today. I'm like, Dude, damn, I'm, just like that. I'm a fast, I'm a fast- In a matter of five minutes, this guy just decided, you know, that he was going to- well, here's the thing, man, because I couldn't, what was happening is I enjoyed the job, man. You can make a, you can make a very good living there as well too. And you can get stuck in that, man. But I knew that that's not my dream. I knew that if yeah. I made my way you, up, you ran a dealership the on that. You and I definitely did. Yeah. And say I'm making 200 K a year running a dealership in, you know, seven years, man, I would still know in my heart, like, this isn't what you really want to do, man. Mm. Yeah. You're making good money. You're doing good. This isn't what you wanted to do. And every day I was there, I lost a little bit of my vision. I could, I could stop seeing myself on stage. I couldn't see the trophies clear. I couldn't see my pro card clear anymore. Whereas now it's clear. I can see it, man. I can envision it, bro. I can close my eyes and see it. Whereas when I was working there every day, it got a little more blurry, a little more blurry to the point that I couldn't see it anymore. Mm. So I was like, wow, I can end up down this road in two years. Next thing I know, um, 25 and yeah i might be making good money but i'm not doing what i want to do so i was like i can't i have to leave I, like it scared me when i couldn't see my vision anymore i left and i'm telling dude, you it was like a black hole dude i'm telling you that day you like I almost could, got dude, sucked in man that day i could see myself back on stage again i could see myself winning my pro card again hallelujah boom dude my, my vision was focused and, and and ever since then i've been i've been focused again but throughout the whole time at audi man i was always on my meals i was always on my workouts but the thing is it's a it's a stressful job right You're working 10 12 hours a day and it's a higher stress um you know workplace for sure you have your good times but it's a high stress workplace and that mental stress took away from what i could do you know outside of that and I need to find a better profession that's going to help support my um my now you're bodybuilding, goals. you're also a fitness trainer, so you're training people. Exactly. So, so. You, you've you've really kind of started a branch with that. You got your own apparel line. Well, now I'm well the thing is now I'm surrounded by it, right? I'm helping people which motivates me. And that's to go to aspire to inspire, man. Like aspire to inspire is about it's not about me inspiring just Talk inspiring other people. It's about all of us inspiring each other to chase our dreams. Whether you know. want to be a professional bodybuilder, a horse rider, or or a chess player, you know? It's about all supporting us to follow our passions and not settle for something. Rax. Some people want to be the best car salesman in the world. Then go do it, man. Be the best in the world, man. You know what I mean? But that's just not the route that I want to go. Tell them. Right? And it's about doing what you want to do no matter what the money is and the money will come. And that's my mindset. So I've been doing uh, personal training, one-on-one -on -one training, man. And then I do online training as well too. And it's been a blast so far. I love because helping it, people. It's fairly man. affordable now, you know? Yeah, man. For, for your knowledge. Because I've had a few sessions, man, and I was like, whoa, this guy like 
different, man. You know, it's it's different having somebody watch your form. It's one thing to rely on your own, you know, expertise. You know, because I've been training for a while too, but not as much as a man. professional like you that would take it to Dude, standing on a stage. Dude, even if you know, so to have that information for an affordable price of only fifty Canadian dollars, sixty, seventy, seventy, yeah. seventy Canadian dollars for that much knowledge that you can obtain for the rest of your life. That's a steal of a deal. Yeah, man. Like, it, 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 again, like, at the end for of the day, one on one. I, I consider, I guarantee if you train with me, man, you're going to have the best workouts of your life. You're going to be in the best shape of your life. I have no doubt about it, man. That's why, like, <laughs> I think that, like, I even underpriced myself, man, because I have no doubts that you're going to be in the best shape of your life. But I like to price it around there just because it, it makes it a little bit more affordable for some people as well, too. You know what I mean? Because I won't be there to help people. But, um, I guarantee you're gonna get in the best shape of your life if you train with me, no doubt, man. hundred percent, man. So I know I know you're gonna get what you pay for, but the biggest thing that I tell people is it's an investment. Man, the better shape that you're in, and I'm not I'm not having people and be like, Oh, let's get you the biggest bodybuilder in the world. If that's what you wanna do, hundred percent. But I have a lot of business guys that'll train with me, man, and ever since they train with me, they're actually making more money. That's seventy an hour, say they're coming five times a week. So for five sessions a week, they're making more money from that because they have more energy. Their confidence is up, man. You know, like I have a couple sales guys, dude, that have made more money. It was an investment for them. You for know, sure. now they look good. Now they have more money in the bank. Self esteem, their confidence up as well too. Yeah. Um, they have more energy throughout the day. You know what I mean? So to me, it's an investment in yourself that's actually going to pay back. If you have more energy, even if you work a nine to five and you want to have another side hustle, you better be healthy, man. Or you're going to be tired, bro. If you go home and you're eating, you know, shit food all day long. You know, and that's yeah. one thing, dude, I'd see in the, in the industry a lot, too. I'd see you just eating pizzas all day, you know, for lunch and everything. But if that's what you want to do, no judgment. But I guarantee at the end of the day, if you're eating healthy, Excuse you're going to make more money if money is something that you're looking for, right? Who doesn't want to have more energy at the end of the day? You know, take away money. Who doesn't want to have more energy? You can play with their kids. Like, I have a couple of clients, man, that they say, like, I have energy to play with my kids now. You know, that's huge. There's There's no price that you can put on that. There's really no price you can put on that, man. So it's an investment within yourself. You know? And you look the part too, man, because I've seen like some guys just like, oh, unless they maybe know the guy or he retired or something, but can you really retire from from being a bodybuilder? How do you yeah, retire like, from that? It's, it becomes a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. Like you can, well, you can retire from being a professional bodybuilder, right? So you're right. not taken to the but extreme. But not to the point you're that not you not stop lifting. working out and you become no. obese. Yeah, for most people, you're not That's like. That's what I mean. So I, like, yeah. I've seen like obese trainers, bro. Yeah, dude, like. um you know, maybe they know their you stuff. Know what I'm saying at least you look the part, so I, I know I'm gonna get my money. Yeah, hundred percent. Like, you know, to give away all the secrets, though. Dude, there is no secrets, man. There's no secrets. There's things that you can learn, man. I'll give away things. I'll give away knowledge. Well, you don't got that like secret formulation. You my know, pizza, bro. The pizza with the basil. My pizza with the basil, bro. That's the... Oh, man. I just gave him my secret. Bro. Aww. No. Shit, cut that <laughs> shit, bro. <laughs> no, for real, though. Like, it's... uh, There's no secrets, man, at the end of the day. It's about... You know, of course, uh, there's knowledge that can be learned, right? I'll give you my knowledge, but there's real no... There's no secrets at the end of the day. You got to put in the work, man. And, and um, you know, even if you have all the knowledge yeah. in the world, there's always more to learn, no matter who you are. And even if you know everything, man, having someone there pushing you... Yeah, even myself, dude, if I have people pushing me, man, if I'm working out with someone that's pushing me, a training partner, I, I'm, I'm going to get a better workout than if I went by myself, man. What do you wish you had known before you started? Anything that could have really helped you today? Man, I did a lot of research when I was younger, man, so I had a really good base. So for the people that don't, you know, like I would that say want, that want to get into it. So for a guy like me, like if you're if you're skinny like a guy like me when I was younger, the biggest thing is just eat more food than you even think. Like I have t people tell me all the time, like, dude, I'm eating like 3,000 – or they'll be like, I'm eating 5,000 calories a day. I'm like, dude, what are you eating? And they'll tell me, I'm like, dude, no, you're not, man. That's like 2,000 calories. People don't understand how much f clean food is, man. How, many, how much clean food you have to eat to hit even 3,000 calories. It's a lot. So I think the biggest thing is like when I was 17, when I really dedicated myself – I ate, uh, that's when I did, I did six meals a day and I did four of those Burger King burgers, man. Those like, those like special ones they have, man. I forget what they're called. Like they weren't like the full big ones, but four of those like smaller ones. Mm -hmm. I'd have four of those every night and every single meal I did uh, two cups of rice and 12 ounces of meat, man. Like I ate an, an insane amount of food. And when I did that, I dedicated myself, dude, for at 17, I was 173. 
by the time I was 18, I was 213, man. Shit. Because I did that for a whole year. I ate like that. And, you know, learning now is probably too much protein, a little too much protein than what I needed. But someone who's skinny, I say eat. Eat more food than you can think and work your ass off in the gym. If someone that's a little bit overweight, it's, you know, eat clean food. Make sure to get your protein in and work your ass off in the gym. You don't have to overcomplicate it. Um, you know, of course, if I was going to get more complex with it, hit me up, man. Send me a message and I can get more complex and help you out, right? And if you want to get into a, onto a program, nutrition program, a training program, then I can help you out with that. Or I can just answer some questions that you have at the moment. But just to answer in the simplest answer, you know, if you're skinny trying to get, you know, more muscle, trying to put on weight, eat more than you can think. If you're a little, you know, overweight, eat clean food. Cut out all the, all the sugary shit and work your ass off in the gym, man, no matter what. And you're going to see progress. Eventually, you're going to hit. It's easier said than done, bro, because, you know, that Toblerone or that, like... I know you like your Toblerones, man. That's a thing, man. And it's like, you know, trying to... And it's one thing when, you, when you've when you had it and that fast... I guess it's an afterthought. And so a you, great bodybuilder said that, actually. What's his name? I forget his name. But he was saying, he's like, if, if food is an afterthought, then you're going to look like an afterthought. Well, you got to find your purpose, man. So for me, for example, I want to be a prof- professional bodybuilder. So, the, but I think I think fitness is a necessity. I don't think it should be a choice. Just like brushing your teeth shouldn't be a choice. You know, you should just do it. A hundred percent. But it doesn't mean you have to do it in an extreme level. You can literally go for. But I'm saying know, being active. You yeah, know, being, you can go for a thirty minute run every day, man. And you're, you know, that's gonna benefit you health wise in in many ways. But I think the biggest thing I is think it's a necessity. A hundred percent. I think you have to find your purpose. So, for example, me, my purpose is I want to be a professional bodybuilder. Where some purpose might be, I want to have more energy to my kids, for my kids, or some people, you know, I want to live longer so I can see my grandkids or whatever it is, man. You know what I mean? I want more energy so I can make more money you need to find that purpose and know that that's the reason why you're doing it if you're just going to go and you don't know why you're going you're going to quit but if you actually have a reason that you're going could be any it could be to pick up girls man whatever your reason is that's going to then keep you on track because you're like okay i'm doing this for this people need that most people need that like prize whatever it is they need that like objective can't just go just to go then you're going to quit man for but sure. if you're going for you a, reason, a reason, yeah. then you're going to stay. That's what I always tell people. So when I when I have people that tell me that they're a little less motivated, I say, why you go to the gym? And they're like, they don't necessarily know. They're like, well, like, uh, I'm like, no, man, why do you come here? Like, what's like, why do you want to get fit? Why do you want to get in shape? Why do you want to be healthier? And some people be like, well, like, I just want to be able to, like, keep up with my kids and um, and have energy to, to, to play with them every single day. You know what I mean? When, so instead of getting home from work and, like, being all tired and – I'm like, then think about that. That's why you're here right now. You're here for your kids right now. Focus on that, man. That's your purpose for being here right now. Mm. You know, some people hit me up. They're like, man, I want to pick up chicks. That's I want to get big arms to pick up chicks. It's like, all right, that's your purpose. That's going to get you in the gym. You want to get laid? It's going to get you in the gym, man. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter what it is, right? Man, like maybe you can't go to the gym for an hour. Just go wake up at 15 minutes early and go for a 15-minute little jog doesn't have to be much, man. You know what I mean? Like a 15-minute little bike ride. You have a bike, don't you? Yeah, I've been using that. Just bang on 15 minutes in the morning if you're if you're super busy. But like at the end of the day, I know how, you're how busy. How long you do you think it bike. takes that you can have like a solid workout? You, how much time do you think it, you, could, you have to dedicate to right. having a solid workout and solid physique? Like like how much time should your workout be? Yeah. Because I see some guys for like two, three hours Dude, and it still looks small. you can work out for 30 minutes, man, every day. And you can get a great physique. It's like, honestly, man, like I would say like nutrition. I, I don't like putting percentages on things, man, but like nutrition is more important than your workout. They both play hand in hand. Like I wouldn't take one away from the other, but like at the end of the day, like if you're new, like if you're working out for 30 minutes a day and your nutrition shit, man, you're going to look like shit. But like can, you can be working out for two hours a day and have shit nutrition. You're not going to look that good for most people. Or if you work out for 30 minutes a day and have amazing nutrition, that guy's probably going to look better. That woman's probably going to look better. So nutrition is number one. Number one. If your nutrition's on point and you're working out for 30 minutes a day, you can look awesome, man. It depends what your goal. If you're working out for 30 minutes a day, are you going to be a, a look like a bodybuilder? No. But you can have a six-pack, man. You can be in shape. Like, I, if you're working out for two and a half hours, man, that's way too long. Like, I used to overtrain. I used to go to the gym for two and a half hours, seven days a week. Man, when I was younger, I'd go to the gym before school at 6.30 in the morning, man, till like 8.00. And then I'd go home and eat and then go to school. And then after school, I'd go to the gym from like 4.30 to like 7.30, man. It's all I like to do, man. I was just addicted to it, man, because it was like my escape from the world. Like when I go to the gym, it's like 
nothing else matters. I put on my music and I go to work. You know, so it's therapy Still for me Nickelback. at the same time. Nah, man. What do you listen to? Drake, only Drake, huh? Dude, Drake, man. Fredo, man. Dave. I'm really into like British, uh, British rap, man. Really into the British thing right now, dude. For sure, dude. I'm into Biebs too, though. For sure, I, I like hip hop, man. Anything hip hop, I'm into, man. That's pretty much all I listen to. Hey. Yeah, and of course, of course, Vinny Vidal as well, man. <laughs> all day bro and my boy Abraham dropped some good beats as well too you've had some really good stuff though lately bro so shout out to you man honestly man you're doing a really good job I'm excited to see what you do in the future man with what, what we're cooking up I'm doing. working with a lot of people now and you know it's, uh, we're, we're gonna be dropping some fire so well, stay, stay tuned for that it's cool man because like you know like we both are we're both like chasing the same thing just different things you know we're both super passionate about what we do we both have a passion and it's just different things, bro. So it's cool to see you when you go to work, man, and see everything that's behind the scenes. Just for example, when somebody tells me, if somebody did, you know, tells me like, oh, it's just steroids or whatever like that. And it's like, they don't see the behind the work. Whereas like, if you're passionate about something, you can respect someone else's craft. Just like I respect your craft because I know how hard it is to even get to where I'm right now and have a long way to go. But to oh, see where sure, to see sure. where you are, man, and how much work people think you can just, you know, you know, spit some stuff into a mic and it turns out it's like, no, man, there's... There's a lot of levels to the shit that you're doing, man. So, yeah, I respect the craft, man. Hundred percent. But like, uh, definitely, uh, I'm I'm the type of guy that puts in the work and uh, doesn't watch Netflix for six hours. Like one song from front to back, how long does it take you? Um, you know, it depends. It depends on the vibe, right? Like sometimes, but he's talking about the, we make the beats, we make the engineering, we do the mixing, the mastering. We do the full production. So sometimes I spend, spend, you know, a day to, you know, cook up a very fresh beat. You know, getting the piano down and drums and, you know, everything all properly. And then the next day, you know, I'll sit there and, you know, write, write to it, you know. But at the same time, I like to juggle. So sometimes yeah. I spend two hours a day on a song and put on another one and put on another one, you know. Yeah, that's like that's the thing, right? There's no really time it just table. Breaks the day, like see, see, even with the podcast, right? Yeah, yeah, you so kind of split it up, man. You split it up. I'm vibing, and I just feel like I don't overthink him, man. Like, how old were you when you started? Uh, I started playing piano at a church when I was 14 years old. So, do we, yeah, we were like the same age when we kind of found what we wanted to do. That's yeah, pretty sweet, man. I've been playing piano since I was eight years old. Yeah. That's crazy. You know what I mean? It's like the same when I was like doing push ups and sit ups and stuff, man. When I was like eight or whatever. It's like grade four. It's crazy, man. So you've been doing it for a while, dude. And when did you start cutting hair? Like, when was the first. So, like, dude, what was the first thing you cut? One sec, one sec. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me get this nice. Bro, it's getting cold in here, dog. Oh, there we go, bro. Yeah. <laughs> it warms it up. Hit huh? me up. Okay, so tell me about like the first time you ever cut hair. Like, what was the first head you cut? The first head I cut was in ninth grade at a soccer field. I brought my wireless clippers and I just went at it. I was cutting there, playing vibing, people were playing soccer and like pretty much like like um ah oh, I'm drawing a blank. But what do you call it? Like busking. You're busking by cutting hair, or was it planned? Like yo, I'm setting up here. Or did you just show up with clippers, bro? Uh, I think the boy needed a cut and oh, he, so you, a boy hit you up before his game. Yeah, he's like, yo, dog, I got to be fresh. Yeah, and how did he know but to like, hit you up? But though? like the thing is, man, is that like legally I couldn't start cutting. You know, I was just doing like friends and stuff Why like legally? that, because you need your license, right? So oh. I had to, I had, to, I dropped out of high school, yeah, um, in eleventh grade, and uh, went on to Marlville College, and that's where I got my cosmetology license, and I've been cutting hair since, man. You damn good at man. You created a good, a good business, man. So Thanks, how bro. was your first cut? Like, was he happy with it? Um, it was like five out of ten, you know. Did you hit a fade? You know, it's a, my my dad's a barber too, so yeah. I was able to you know learn a lot of things before going into it. But you know, it just I don't think I ever really gave bad haircuts. I think I was always you know um, just took forever. Like when I first started, it was like it was like to be happy with it, it took me like an an hour and a half, man. Man, you've been doing it for a while, man. See, like I remember like before you, man. I I this was years ago, man. I went to a barber dude, and I, I got a fade, man. It was probably like. 70 minutes dog dude i can show up at your at your studio man and i'll you'll fade me up super tight in like beard and hair bro in like 25 in and out yeah man it's crazy man 
It's really crazy. You do it for that long, right? It's the only job uh, I really ever had in music. Check this. So this was before you, bro. So I went to this. Oh man. So my buddy was like, "Yo, you gotta go check out this barber." Because like I like this was before like I you know was like chilling with you and stuff like that. I don't know. It was years ago, man. But my boy's like, "Yo, you gotta hit this barber up." I was like, "All right, man." So I hit this guy up and I go in, dude. Seventy-five minute fade, bro. And my shit. It was so I had a photo shoot that night. And dude, my I had my sh- everything was like all red bumps, bro. Aww. Like it was like, and I had a photo shoot, man. Yeah, there's a lot to it, man. Dude, it's I was just, tripping. Sometimes out, it man. may seem like easier than it is. Or dude, whatever, I've never but... had with you. I've sensitive skin with you, man. I've never had red bumps or anything ever, dude. It's crazy, man. Yeah, man. It's actually cr- it's like every barber I I went to before you, bro. Dude, my my neck, man, would be like, I don't even know what to, dude. It was like fucking. The itchiest, like, all red bumps and shit, bro. Looked like I had a fucking neck disease, man. Damn. Literally, bro. Every single one. I couldn't go and not, man. The first time I went to you, I was like, shit. Dude, the first time I got... Dude, tell the story the first time you got, you, I got a cut from you. No, I'll tell it, man. Well, well, this motherfucker, dude. So I'm out at night, man, <laughs> at this restaurant. And this fucking guy comes up to me. I was in the washroom. Cactus yeah, Club washroom. Yeah, at Cactus Club. And this guy comes up to me. He's like, yo, man. I forget the exact word, so correct me if I'm wrong. What I was the like, fuck's wrong with your hair? I was like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> he said, what the fuck's wrong with your hair? And I was like, what are you talking about? And I was feeling good, man. I was feeling fresh, like I had a good fit on and stuff. And I was like feeling myself. And this guy's like, what the fuck's wrong with you? I was like, what? He like goes in my head. He's like, dude, it's way too high up here, man. You got to lower that shit down. He's like, yo. Yeah, it was like he's sticking like, up like rooster tail. Yeah, you're like, yo, text me, man, and we'll set it up. And I got you. So I text this guy and uh, never look back, man. Yeah, I never actually even do that. I've never ever yeah. told someone come, you know, and uh, you know, be my. Well, clients. people come to you. you well, know, like people come to me. Well, man. dude, I've known you. I've for, been doing for too long, and the dude, word gets out. Think about like how small the world, man. Like, we went to the same elementary school, man. That is true. That is true. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, man. Like crazy. What was it? <laughs> Dude, Colonel Leger, bro. That's that's crazy, man. <laughs> now, now that I think of it, hey? Dude, like, wow. back, man, think about back in the day. Do you remember at recess, bro? <laughs> what, when I created a game called Zombies? Holy fuck, I can't believe you created that. So this guy creates this game called Zombies, man. Dude, talk <laughs> about, oh, man, talk about Zombies, bro. Well, this was before Zombies were even popular, man. Fuck. Before the, even I Am Legend, before all that stuff. So this was like. Like, what year would you think this was? Oh, uh, how old were we? It was man? probably 2004, 2005, something like that. Like we were probably seven. Yeah, man. You're because you're a little older than me. Yeah, a couple years. Yeah, so you're probably like nine, bro, or something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Holy fuck, man! Yeah, dude, man. Talk, tell them the game, bro. So it was pretty gangster game, man. You know, and not everyone could be. You had to be invited to it. Oh, it was legit. It was the bro. only like I did not want someone, you know, chasing us for hours. <laughs> so you had to be <laughs> athletically. This shit fit. was invite only, bro. Oh yeah, man. Oh Exclusive, yeah. Exclusive. Oh man. yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, just basically, uh, you know, got into it like that, and you know, got the best athletes, and <laughs> it, it was it was you had to run for your life, and so, if this guy caught you, you're a zombie, and well, you gotta get everyone else. Well, what we did was is that you would be. You created it so that we had a group of people. Half the people are zombies. Yeah. Half the people are humans. Yeah. So we'd line up and then we'd sort it out. And then fucking the humans would go hide. And then the zombies would um, go find the humans technically. Yeah. And like all they had to do was touch you and then you turn into a zombie. I was actually thinking <laughs> of doing like an adult version of it, bro. Like just around like the city. A straight up one man. Fuck, yeah, that would be fucking funny, man. Yeah, man. We get twenty boys, man. <laughs> and we're going crazy. Holy shit, that would be funny, man. Like we're in our cars and shit, bro. Nah, no, nah, just straight so, running he, around the river, maybe. You and, know, just like whoever catches. Man, catches. that would be funny, man. I'm down to do it. What bro. if we went into a forest, bro? I'm gonna start that up, actually. You know what I mean? We're gonna have another game, of zombies. That would be fucking. That would be crazy, bro. Should we put money on the line? Yeah, man. Do you gamble ever? The one, the last one to be a zombie gets a thousand bucks. Oh, fuck, I So if we had 20 people, everyone puts in like 50 bucks. Yeah, I'm going to have actual actual dope. referees. Man, like straight, that would be legit. Like real referees. We should get the camera out there, too. Get this boy out here. Got the, Could you yeah. imagine this boy by the river just with the camera fucking... Yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> on his, man. like, uh, what are those electric things called uh, that you can stand on and... 
What is those called? Yo, I, 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 this might sound crazy, but like, I'm actually gonna have this, bro. I'm in, bro. I'm not. I know it doesn't sound crazy. I'm in. But what Word. are those things called that you stand on the the electric board that goes? Uh, hoverboard. Yeah, I want this fucking guy. On the hoverboard. Not boards. a hoverboard. What no, is it no, called, no, bro? No. There's two wheels on it, bro. Oh man. And you stand um, on it. Have you seen Mike Tyson? Uh, scooter. No, man. <laughs> what is it called? Is it a hoverboard? I think it's yeah yeah it yeah. It is yeah, called yeah. a hoverboard. hoverboard I want to see this guy on a hoverboard with his camera, bro, filming this whole thing. Have you done I want to put it on YouTube. I think it's called a booster board. Booster board. Booster. Yeah. That doesn't sound right either. Nah, man. it doesn't. Nah, it's hoverboard, dude. Bro. Can you look up something and show it, or can you put it on the screen after? Yeah, man, I got it on the screen right dude, now. Okay, look up Mike Tyson falls in hoverboard, bro. Watch that, man. Dude, this shit is hilarious, man. While we pull it up, um, talk to me, bro. Uh, you started up some shit too, like some vacuum stuff, eh? Nah, nah, you worked, you worked for a vacuum oh, company. Dog. So, my first job when I was younger, I did the Star Phoenix, man. So that was you I were was, making like ton of money though, too. Oh, bro. <laughs> for like, how, how old were you? For how you old that? I was, man. How old were you? Okay, yo. So first jobs when I was younger, man, was like newspaper. Okay, and I'll just go straight to the vacuums, man. So yeah, so it was technically my first like job, other than like you know the miscellaneous stuff, but um, I was 17 years old, man. I was in summer after grade 10, going to grade 11, and I needed to get a job for the summer. I was like, fuck, I'm gonna get a job. So I'm on like Kijiji looking, and there's this vacuum place that it was like Filter Queen vacuums, man. It was like make up to like 10 grand a month or whatever. I was like, fuck, dude, I'm in. So I showed up at this place, 17 years old, man. I was like, what's up, boys? Like, I'm here to sell some vacuums. <laughs> and I just killed the interview, man. And uh, so they hired me, and I'm talking six days a week, dude. No, man. I undersell myself. Seven days a week from literally 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. at night, I was selling vacuums, man. Filter Queen Vacuum is the best vacuum in the world. I believe it to this day, man. I wasn't selling no bullshit, man. So here's what would happen, man. Tell so me about this, man. We Tell had, me how, we had people. How, why is it the best? So check this I out. I think Dyson's better. Well, here's the thing, But man. I want to hear this. Dude, Let's go. here's the thing, and I'm a little rusty because uh, this was six years ago. But so when you have most vacuums, man, including the Dysons, man, you're going to have a filter. So when you suck in, so you, you have the hose or whatever, and you suck in the dirt, and it comes through, and it smacks the filter. So the filter starts clogging, man. So then what happens is behind the filter, you have the motor. And then behind the motor, you have, you know where the air comes out? Because the air comes in, it has to come out. Like the air comes out here. So you know when you're vacuuming, you smell that burning smell? Dude, that's <laughs> dust coming into the vacuum, hitting the filter, pushing the other dust through the filter into the motor, burning the dust and shooting it back behind you. And what does this one do? Dude, so this one, when it comes in, it spins around the filter. Dude, you can suck up water with it and the filter stays dry. Nails, man, doesn't damage the filter at all. The best fucking vacuum you can get, man, hands down. My family still has it to this day. It's so worth you, it. Oh, it's yeah, like yeah, 23, you, you 2300. Shit, well, here's how it worked though. It was crazy, man. It was an operation, dude. <laughs> like an operation, man. Like it might've even been a little on the sketchy side, but I didn't know, man. And I, <laughs> it's a good product, dude, at the end of the day. So they had people in the back at Filter Queen, man, at the offices, dude. They didn't even have a sign, man. <laughs> like they didn't even have a sign, dude. So the people in the back would go through the phone book and call every single one. There's probably like four people back there working. They'd call every single person. Hey, this is Jane from Filter Queen. I just want to call and let you know that you have uh, won a barbecue set. And they're like, fucking no way, dude. Or whatever, like one out of 100 <laughs> people would be like, be like, awesome. We'll just do it. And they'll be like, awesome. And then, we'll, they'll, and then they'd be like, um, we can have one of our representatives just come and, and drop off the barbecue set. Does that sound good for you, Jane? And they're just like, yeah, sounds good. So then I'll pull up, man. I'll be like, hey, I'm Lana from Filter Queen. I'm just here to drop off a barbecue set. They'll be like, sweet. And be like, um, just before I give you the barbecue set, all I got to do is I just got to show you a quick uh, presentation on an air purification system. Does that sound good with you? And they're like, oh, like, oh, we're kind of like busy. I think the odd person would be like, yeah, sure. Some people would be like, nah. Or like, I'm kind of busy. And I'd be like, honestly, it'll just take a few moments of your time. And I would really appreciate it. I'm just a high school kid. And this is all true. I'm just a high school kid um, going into grade 11, <laughs> just trying to make some extra money. All I have to do is give you the presentation. I get paid. You get your barbecue sent. And it's a win-win. And Even they, if they don't buy it. Yeah. So then they'd be like, oh, all right, all right. You know what I mean? Like, they're like, fuck this guy. 
So I pull it. So I go to my car and I have three boxes, dude. It was three big ass boxes. <laughs> and I walk up to the house like this, and you you can tell in their face they're like, "What the fuck did I just get myself into, dude?" Fast forward hour and a half later, they just buy a three thousand dollar purification system, and I go on my way. Uh, no way. But they they loved it, man. It was like, dude, it was the best vacuum ever. How do you not buy it, dude? Do three I re- boxes, man? That got me, bro. Bro, I would carry three motherfucking boxes, dude. <laughs> I didn't. They forgot about the fucking barbecue set by the time it was over. Like I'm talking a 90 minute presentation. No, <laughs> dude, 90 minutes are sitting no there. No, but they're just like, wow, this vacuum's amazing because it was amazing, man. There's a there's a lifetime warranty, man. At the time, Filter Queen was around for 89 years, man. Filter Queen, Filter Queen, they've been around for 89 years, man. Um, lifetime warranty on this thing. Think about it. Lifetime. Your, your, your Dyson breaks, man. Every every like say five to seven years, man, because it's, it's not built grand? correctly. Dude, but the say the the Dyson seven hundred man, you go through it's one cordless. No, it was a cord. But think about okay. it. You go through seven portable though. Yeah, but check this out. You have seven years on a Dyson, and you spend seven hundred. Seven if you're lucky, dude. And say every seven years you're replacing it. Seven hundred on that thing, and seven fourteen by twenty one years, man. You've spent three grand on on a Dyson. What yeah. all you have to do was buy a Filter Queen. You have a way cleaner house, man. Your air is going to be way more purified and you're just living a better life, man. In 21 years, you spent the same amount of money on vacuums. <sighs> why not, honest, get, bro, for me, why I, not get the right one now? I don't have any carpet. I hate carpet. Well, then you can just get the purification system so it can sit anywhere in your house and it reaches, uh, I believe, 1,400 square feet. Um, so you could have one on the main floor, one on the bottom, and all it does is actually purify the air, bring dust from the air into the purification system and release fresh air. Yeah. Um, so th- that one's only 700. So you're trying, to, you're trying to sell me some shit right now. Yeah, bro. I got some in the car here. Want me to go grab it? Yeah, I'm like, go. Yeah, I'll, I'll only take a couple minutes of your time, bro. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it was the funniest thing ever. But no, man, I was clearing. Like, I was 17 years old, and I did it for seven weeks, man. And I was clearing two grand every week, bro. So I, my interest is on the company. So they lost that, like, barbecue set? How much was a barbecue set worth? Because they well, take the some bar- risks no, of, no, of somebody dude, not buying that. No, the barbecue, barbecue set. set was just like a spatula and uh, and like tweezers. No way. That's, that's <laughs> all it was? I thought it was a full no, long man, barbecue set. It's probably set. worth like fucking five bucks, man. Wow. Yeah, bro. That's a crazy idea, man. But like it, it, at the end of the day, like it wasn't like I believed it. I still to this day believe in the vacuums, man. Like I, I can never sell something I don't believe in. And they could see the excitement on my face. They're like, hey, this kid's not making this shit up. Because you can tell when a sales guy's like fucking doesn't believe their product. Like, I still believe the product, man, and I'm 23 now. How many do you think of the, you sold? Like, how much money did you make from that? Oh, man, I would sell. Wait, how old were you again? So, I was, I just turned 17. Okay. Just turned 17. I was going and to How much money 11. were you making then? Dude, I had, during selling those, I was literally clearing two grand a week, man, after tax. That's like, not no bad. Joke. And you're going to school? Dude, that was just my summer holiday gig. Wow. It was good, man. At that age, bro, like coming back to school with like make like 10 Gs over the summer, That's bro. That's when was I started like, with entrepreneur. I was like, fuck yeah, bro. This is dope. Well, here's the, no, man. You want to talk about start of entrepreneuring, man? So back in the day, what I did was, and I was young, man. I'm talking elementary school. Man, I would, so I did the Star Phoenix when I was younger, the sun. I think most kids do that. But what I would do is every time it, um, it snowed. I would go shovel driveways, man. So I'd go to every single driveway and be like, hey, can I shovel uh, your driveway? And they're like, how much? And I'm like, it's up to you. Some people gave me five bucks and it would take me an hour and I'd be like, fuck. Some people would give me 50 bucks, man, to shovel the driveway. And every single time it snowed, I'd go around um, all of the uh, all of my neighborhood and I'd make a couple hundred bucks in a night just doing that. And then in the summertime, I had one buddy who had a lawnmower. So we'd go around his neighborhood and just mow lawns, dude. So you started hustling. Make a couple hundred bucks. So check this out. And this shit's funny, man. I always was just like, hey, how can I make more money? So my mom had a whole bunch of shit that she didn't need in her house, man. Like just like stuff she collected all the time. So when I found out about Kijiji, man, fuck dude, I'd see a lamp. I'm like, man, no one ever turns this on. I'd just take a picture of it, post it online for like 20 bucks. And literally someone would show up. I'm like fucking like, (laughs) I'm a kid, dude. I'm in elementary school. And like someone would show up and be like, hey, I'm here for the lamp. I'm like, yeah, man. And like just sell a lamp. And like a couple weeks later, my mom like, fuck, didn't we have a lamp there? I'm like, I don't know. Dude, I would sell anything. I'll just go around and like find shit in my house that wasn't used. <laughs> and I'd be like, yo, I'm going to sell this shit. No word of a lie, bro. My mom sometimes would be like, yo, have you seen this? And I'm like, I don't know. I haven't seen it. What the? F- <laughs> I'm not kidding, bro. Up, man. I'm not kidding, bro. Like it was just stuff we didn't What'd you need. buy with it? Chicken breast and stuff? Bro, um, 
I, I, I say I was really good at saving money when I was younger. I didn't spend any money, man. None, man. Like I just maybe the odd like meal or something like that with the guys. But like I, I was really good at saving money when I was in like in elementary school, man. You don't really have to buy anything. So I just saved up my cash, man. It's not like you're making a whole bunch of money doing that though. Like when you're that old though, like if you have a thousand bucks, man, it seems like a lot of money to you back then. Cause you don't have bills or anything. Right. Whereas like now a thousand bucks is nothing, man. Like what is a thousand bucks, dude? You can eat a little bit of food for a couple of weeks, right? Like, but when you're younger, man, it seems like a, you know, mm-hmm. decent amount of money. Okay. Check this out. So look up. It's hilarious, man. Mike Tyson falls on hoverboard. Yo, can you hit me with a light on this, bro? Yeah, man, I got you. Right here. Mike Tyson falls on a hoverboard? Yeah, bro. You really want to see this right now, hey? Bro, it's hilarious, man. You got to watch it. I've been watching a lot of Mike Tyson stuff lately, man. He's got a dope podcast, too. Hop Auction with Mike Tyson, it's called. Yeah. It's super dope. All right, man. My assistant called in sick today, so... I'm going to have to do this shit myself, man. We're this multitasking, really well. bro. Trust me, it's going to be worth it, man. <laughs> Honestly, I really like my type. Man, he was a badass back in the day, but now he talks about, like, his 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 mindset now is, like, the most humble guy ever, dude, now. He just talks about the guy he used to be, man, and just, like, how much he hates that guy and stuff. Like, yeah, yeah. It's actually really interesting, man. He's into this drug called the Toad. The Toad? It's like he says it's DMT times 10. I've never done DMT or anything like that, but... He said it was the craziest thing he ever did in his life, man. I don't want to explain it though. You can what, watch it if you want. I, what, is, what is it made of, man? I don't, fuck, I don't know anything about it, bro. I just know that, like, I think it's like they actually, like, Sounds take it out of a toad man. in some country, man. Some, like, special toad or something like that. <laughs> ah, shit. Check this out, bro. <laughs> Show them. Look at this. Just put it on. Look at this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> Shit, bro. I don't know why I get a kick out of it so much, bro. It's fucking hilarious. Thank God. This I'm dude posts it on his podcast all the time. He like has it like at the start of his podcast sometimes. Just him oh, fucking. Oh, man. It's fucking funny, man. He got up though, so it's all good, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> Holy fuck! <laughs> How you doing, fuck. Andrew? That gets me going. Do you have a pump yet, or what? <laughs> yeah. This guy's moving around he's like a machine vascular. Back here, bro. As you know. I can see through his sweater, bro. The guy's about to rip his sweater, man. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> oh, that's so funny, dude. Jeez, man. That's good so, weed, man. I got a question for you, bro. Yeah. Are you natural? <laughs> yeah, we're going to cut this shit, bro. No. <laughs> <laughs> you funny motherfucker, man. I think like um, just like in in any sport, there's risks that you have to take. Like when it comes to being a bodybuilder, man, if you want to be professional, at some point you do have to take performance enhancements, you know. But um, I think just like any other sport, like it's like, you know, an NFL man, like if you're like a lineman, I think the average death rate is like 55 or something. I could be wrong. You know, in NASCAR, you could die at, at any at any day, man, at any race, right? So mm-hmm. there's risks you got to take. Um, but I think in bodybuilding, man, like um, if you're if you know what you're doing, you done you do you do diligence, man. It's um, it can be a, you can live a very healthy lifestyle while chasing the bodybuilding dream, which is what I try to do, and that's why I try to eat as you know clean as possible and as pure as possible as well too, mm. as well too. But yeah, man. So pizza's your secret formulation out of the basil bro it's all about the flick of the wrist man too like with the basil man you know um it's it's all about the touch man like people like send me the ingredients i'm like man i could send you the ingredients but it, it still ain't gonna taste that uh, like mine man you know it's not just about the ingredients man it's about how you do it man it's about the fashion you do it in you know at the end of the day but like i like pizza man burgers i really i love ice cream man like I like a lot of foods, but like I I'm I don't like eat ra- eat it randomly though. Everything's planned, man. Like I don't cheat on my diet really. It's just like you know, obviously sometimes I relax a little bit because you have to mentally. You have to always, you know, know when to rest yourself a little bit. Or eventually you're gonna get burnt out, right? 
Um, but it's like when I'm in my off season right now, it's like they're planned meals. You know, it's not like I'm like you call them cheap. Like I call them refeed meals, right? It's not like I'm cheating, man. It's on my diet. I need them with my metabolism. If I want to put on size and continue to grow, I need to have those days where I'm, you know, pouring calories. You know, if I had a cheat meal every single day, I wouldn't be able to eat the rest of my meals throughout the day either because I'm eating a lot of food throughout the day, right? So I have to find that balance where I can still eat all my meals and get as and maximum amount of calories in as possible and, and utilize them, right? So, so you still do cardio, huh? Dude, every single morning I do cardio. So in like right now when it's cold out, I do cardio just like I go to the, to the gym and do stairs usually. 20 minutes is, is, is all I need. In the summertime, I go by the river, man. Um and do cardio by the river, man. I'll go on like a 25 or 30 minute walk, man. And then I'll kind of go upstairs, you know, as it, as it, as they come as well too. Um, but yeah, man, 20 to 30 minutes every single morning, no matter really where I'm at. If I'm on contest prep, sometimes I'll, I'll raise that up. Um, just cause I want to burn a little bit more calories. And in the summertime, man, yeah, I catch myself like doing other act. Like I like to, as much as I can, man, I like to stay versatile and like play tennis and stuff like that too. Um, golf as well, which isn't, you know, doesn't take that much work. I like to walk the course though, right? So like it's still, you're still getting active, man. Um, you know, I like to like, I like to do, I, I'm, I like to play sports too, man, right? So I grew up an athlete. So I, I, I stay I stay active through that way as well too. But to answer your question, man, every morning cardio. I think it's amazing if you can get in a routine. I don't even do the cardio necessarily for like the physical aspect. Yeah, a little bit, but more for the mental aspect. Like if I can wake up and I can go by the river, every single morning you're gonna have a way better day way like, better like day lubricates your body for the day man it just frees my mind for the day i think about what i want to accomplish man and i put myself in the right mindset you are forcing yourself to wake up early which is then giving you time so you're not rushed and you know you're prepared man for the day you're setting yourself up for success man you know 100. whereas like if i don't do cardio i wake up i just barely get my breakfast in i go off to, on my day i ain't having the same day no. It's a 30 minute difference in my wake up time. Totally agree. Do you know what I mean? So it's a mental thing for me. You win the morning, you win the day. 100%, man. That's, I, I completely agree with that. 100%. It's about both starting off right, man, and, and catching that momentum. And then just doing it every single day. Like they say it takes like two weeks, I think, to get into a routine. Well, Landon, like how, how early was were we waking to do the workouts? Well, like when we work out, man, when you train with me, we're doing 6 a.m., man. So 6 a.m. I wake up at 5.30, then I'll train Facts. you, go home, do my cardio, and then I'm and I was getting some real yeah. good workouts, man. Yeah, well, dude. Lately, you, I've been busy, but. I know. But you know, I'm, I'm really going to get back in, man, ASAP like tomorrow morning. Yeah, man. dude, let's do it, man, because you've been making some you've been making some good gains, bro, for sure. Like, you've been progressing, man, um, like, daily, man. For sure. Like, man, for sure. 100%, bro. That's the thing. When you go push yourself like that, I think when you go in the gym and push yourself as well, too, like, you want to eat healthier. Like, you, like it eat, becomes natural. Yeah, like, you don't want to come home and just eat shit, man. You know what I mean? Like, well, like it's kind of like... It's, it doesn't make sense, man. So when you go, like, do cardio in the morning or you work out in the morning, man, like, you're not going to go home and eat pizza, bro. You're going to be like, hey, I'm going to get some protein in, right? Mm. It starts you off right, man. It gets you on that right mindset, dude. Mm. For sure, man. That's facts, man. So you believe in supplements? Oh, for sure. Well, like, there's, like, there's some supplements that... What's your favorite supplements? Well, for me, like, creatine, glutamine, um... Whey protein, those are proven, and and BCAs or EAs, those are all proven and studied to work. So those are absolute musts, I think, in 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 anyone's um, supplementation. You know, of course, money goes into it as well too. So even whey proteins, obviously, is proven and studied to work, man. Like it's a good, high quality protein source, and it's the cheapest source of protein you can get. It's you believe way in cheaper. milk. In milk, well, like. You're, you I love that whey, huh? You like that byproduct. Well, like I use a whey isolate, man. You can get lactose free as well too. Like I don't drink milk. What do you say to people that say that milk is like, or sorry, whey is nothing but a milk byproduct? Well, like it's a byproduct from cheese. Whey is. Yeah. Okay. I don't think like I think whey whey proteins are super high quality source. Okay. But like I would say that like. Because I felt like what I what I, some of the conspiracies out there, or some of the theories out there, is that the whey protein is you know a byproduct of milk, and instead of throwing it in the garbage, 
They're like, let's just stir it up, make it powder, and let's sell it to people. Well, it's a byproduct of a cheese. It's just like t- uh, Timbits are a byproduct of a donut. It doesn't mean they don't taste good. They're still just some people like Timbits more, bro. If we're trying to do it, like oh no, not nothing about the taste. The taste is amazing. I'm not even talking about taste. The, All I'm the saying the taste is, is amazing. I'm, take, I'm, I'm saying about like the actual. I think I said that wrong. Impact on the body. That's what I mean, though. Like for example, like a Timbit. Because a lot of people do it for like. Like, do you think of a Tim- stuff? I don't think there's that much nutritional. Well, there isn't no there. So here's the thing. I believe in whole foods as much as possible. If you're on a budget. If I was on a budget when it comes to my food, I would have whey protein for two meals a day for sure because it's the cheapest source, man. It's better than not getting anything in. For me, I think whey protein is better than any other protein before my workout for myself because it digests so easily. But um, you, there's no reason that you actually need whey protein. You can go 100% whole foods if you want. 100% you don't need whey protein. Whey protein is not going to benefit you any more than a cup of egg whites. Mm. same stuff but when you're looking at a chicken or a steak yeah you're getting a lot more macronutrients in a chicken or steak than a whey protein if you just had a whey protein as your only protein source that's stupid man like you're gonna be losing a lot of different macronutrients and you're it's not yeah, gonna be that, beneficial. That, that, that's what kind of what i was thinking just so. like if you had egg whites all day you, you don't want to do that you got to mix up your protein sources so for me whey protein once a day man but you can't you can't rely on it and by no means do you need it you can get in really good shape and not take any supplements 100 percent like Supplements are there as supplements, exactly what they're called. They're there to supplement what you're doing and give you that little bit of an extra edge. But you can get in amazing shape and not take any supplements at all, 100%. But supplements are going to take you to that next level. So what would you say? Glutamine and creatine. Glutamine, proven and studied. So glutamine, um, 10 to 15 grams is really good for gut health. Anything more is really good for muscle recovery. So I take 20 grams a day. Creatine, I take creatine monohydrate, um, 10 uh, grams a day. Again, proven and studied to work. Uh, EEAs, essential amino acids I take during my workout. So there's nine essential amino acids that create a protein. They pretty much, what EEAs do, they break those nine essential amino acids into the smallest form of a protein because when you have a full protein, a complete protein, like a chicken breast, it's going to take an hour and a half to get into your muscles. Whereas if you... And with an EEA, they take this, they, they compact it and, and, and it takes like minutes to get into your, into your muscles. So you want to drink it during your workout to keep you in an anabolic state because it's the smallest form of a protein, right? So it gets in there real quick. Um, so those are proven to study to work and I think they make a big difference as well too. So, um, but do you need them and to get in great shape? No. What else? But are they going to help you? hundred percent. That's it. Hey, just those things. Well, then after that, you can continue to go like vitamins, for example, like that's a no brainer, man. Like anyone, should, whether you work out or not, man, take vitamins. Like I like to take a, a multivitamin pack myself and it has a little bit of everything, but like we should all be taking vitamin C, vitamin B12, whether you work out or not, man, 100%. Um, just go get yourself a good multivitamin pack and you'll be good. But that, I take powdered greens. I eat a ton of vegetables, but I still take powdered greens. You're coming out with your own multivitamin, aren't you? Well, not yet, no. No, I don't have anything right now, no. Oh, okay. I thought you had one. one day, no. No, maybe one day. It's something that I would like to do, man, like, and... and I want to do it at the at the right time, man, when I can focus on it because I don't want to just release – I wouldn't want to just release products just to release products, man. Um, I would I, I would want to make it as, as best as possible, not cheap out. So right now, like I work with Belize Supplements, man, and they're amazing, man. They've been around for like four years, Max and Juliana, the owners, and they take really good care of me, man. Like they – they they get all the supplements for me that I need, man, and they take great care of me. All their products are honestly ten out of ten. And like, dude, I don't I don't just say that just like, like just cause, man. But if you're gonna get supplements, man, like, believe supplements is what I take. I think everything they do is super high quality. I don't think I know it's super high quality. I know them personally, man. I know that the passion that they have with their brand um, is next to none, man. Just as passionate as we are with what we do, right? Because that's what they wake up and that's their purpose in the morning. Um, and that they make amazing products, man. You Believe, know? huh? Yeah. That's a shameless plug, man. Just because, just because, man, sometimes you just gotta, you gotta plug them like that, man. They're good. Dude, an amazing company, man. Like I said, they take amazing care of me as well too. And I wouldn't, like I said, and I would never sell anything that I don't believe in, man. Even like vacuums, it's like, I believe in it, bro. You know what I mean? I wouldn't be able to sell it. People would be like, bro, Crowder, man. Like, well, what, what about your skin? Around? How do you get your skin so nice? Well, man. 
the number one thing I take, and you know, because you recommended it to me, man, is with the Remy Rico's face mask. Ever since you recommended it to me, I love it, dude. Like, I, I, I definitely use it once a week. Sometimes I do it twice a week, which I don't know if it's too much, man, to do twice a week. I think it's too much, yeah. But once a week, sometimes I just do it just because, man. Once a week is nice. But ever since I've been using that, it's really cleared up my my, my skin, man. Um, so what I've been doing, man. And it looks for, tighter, I think, because it has that sea silt in there, which is yeah, anti-aging. Yeah, well, man, I've been working really hard on on some bars that I wanted to spit for you, bro. Because I knew we were going to do this podcast, man. Let's do it. I put a lot of passion into it, bro. And He's joking know, with me or are you serious? I'm serious, bro. You serious, man? Why would I be joking, man? Let's do it. Let's see. Let's see All what right, you brother. got. You want, you want me to like beatbox for you or something? Yeah, bro. Oh, man. Keep it going, bro. Yeah. Yo, I'm sitting at a table with Vinny. Royal Play Production. Yeah. Drinking a sugar-free Red Bull and a Fiji water. Yeah. I'm feeling myself. Got a MacBook to my left. Got the camera guy to the right. Yeah. I got a big black mic that I'm talking into and I'm rapping into too. Yeah. Put me on the next record. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Bro, I'm just fucking around, bro. I didn't prepare anything, bro. That was pretty good beats though, dog, for real. Keep going, man. Keep going. You had it, you had it, man. Bro, you had it. I can't rap or shit, dog. I'm not good at this, man. You had the flow though, man. You think so, bro? Yeah, man. You really think so, Vinny? We'll just slap some so. auto-tune on it. Just wanna let the audience know that I actually just made that up on the spot and I didn't prepare it all, man. But um keep it going, man, if you wanna go. Ah, do you want me to switch it up? Yeah, switch it up. <laughs> Yo. Big fat blunts, big fat blunts, yeah. Big fat blunts, big fat blunts. That's the first time I think I ever freestyled in my life, dog. I'm yeah. not even kidding. No, I think I did once actually with you. That was literally like the second time I've ever freestyled in my life, bro. I give myself a good one out of ten. Yeah. Like, I think I beat zero. Yeah. I don't think that's you no know, zero. Yeah. You know, what, what do you think, bro? You, bro? I think uh like do you think if like if I, I drop it's not your purpose, bro. No man, like I I think you gotta just focus on this bodybuilding thing. I appreciate that. We still bro. gotta get you in the studio, see what you can come up with on the spot. Yeah. Honestly, we can stay healthy, staying healthy, staying yeah. healthy, yeah. <laughs> eating the broccoli, eating the broccoli, yeah. <laughs> but yo, get would you gains, give him gains, get them gains, right? Would you spit right now, bro? Come on and vibe. Would you spit right now? What I spit on the spot? Yeah. On a spot? Right now, bro. Um, I'll pass, man. All right, bro. Yeah, I'm just like, I'm too, bar- too wavy. That's chill, bro. I feel you, man. I feel that for sure, bro. Yeah. All right, brother. Well, thanks for coming through, man. It was definitely a vibe. I appreciate it, man. It's always a good so time. So what did you say? The glutamine, the creatine, and... Glutamine, creatine, bro, <laughs> and EEAs, man. Or number one, eat clean and work hard. And follow your passion. You heard it here first. Thanks for coming through, Crowd of Six. Appreciate it, brother. Appreciate it. My man. So what do you say?